Sri Lanka has a high literacy rate of 92%, which is the highest in South Asia and one of the highest in Asia. Buddhism was introduced to Sri Lanka in the 3rd century BC by Arahat Mahinda. The Buddhist indigenous system of education in ancient Sri Lanka was organized at three distinct levels. Village school, known as Guru Gedra, temple schools and the Piruvena. The majority of the children in a village went to the Guru Gedra for their primary education and those who went forward into secondary education entered a temple school or a monastery. The Piruvena represented the zenith of education in ancient Sri Lanka and was similar to universities in other countries. Nevertheless, the system of education was elitist. This was mainly due to the existence of a caste system. Only the royalty and nobility had access to education and literacy of the masses were poor. The Portuguese arrived to Sri Lanka in 1505. They were the first to introduce Western education to Sri Lanka. The prime objective of the newly introduced education system was spreading Catholic religion. In 1658, the Dutch defeated Portuguese and captured the coastal areas of Sri Lanka. The Dutch radically changed its education system with missionaries of the Dutch Reformed Church. The Dutch were more organized and systematic than the Portuguese in their approach to education. They introduced a systematic examination process into the education system. In 1796, the British were handed over the coastal areas by the Dutch. The British operated through the East India Trade Company and they were initially interested in securing the power in the island, but later expanded to complete occupation in 1815. The prime motive of all three Western nations was similar, spreading the religion through education. Their target was the very future generation, the children. The Portuguese, the Dutch and the British propagated their religions and imparted the Western culture to the elite of the Sri Lankan society. They also replaced the caste-based access for education by their religious education system. Due to this, people of lower castes had access to education and to reach higher echelons of social structure. However, the education at primary and secondary levels were highly religion-oriented, securing the motive of religious conversion. Unfortunately, Pirvena and temple schools, which had provided valuable service for more than one and a half millennia, declined due to lack of state patronage and warfare. As a result of the long period of rule, the British could establish themselves firmly in the country and create a lasting impact on our education with some characteristics persisting even at present. After the first rebellion against the British rule in 1818, the government realized that the unity of the nation is dangerous for their own. As a solution, the British implemented the policy DVD et tempera, divide and conquer, by separating the population on race, religion and social status. The missionary schools were used as a tool to create this division. The missionary schools received generous patronage from the state throughout this period. Missionary education led to a divided society on the lines of ethnicity, religion, language and economic ability. In geographic terms too, there was no uniformity. The best schools were found along the southwest coast, mostly in Kalama. The people in these areas came to be directly influenced by the British and became acculturated to the Western culture, were often converted to Christianity and could gain from these changes by obtaining employment and improving their social status. The people in the other areas remained untouched by the Western education and culture and reaped lesser dividends through vernacular education. The British set up the Schools Commission in 1834 and an important event during this period was the setting up of the Colombo Academy in 1835, which was the first public school in Sri Lanka. This led to the emergence of an educated middle class in the society. The Morgan Committee was appointed in 1867 and through its recommendations established vernacular schools intended to provide free mass education. This was a pivotal landmark in Sri Lankan education.
The Buddhist Theosophical Society was instrumental in the revival of Buddhist education in Sri Lanka. Starting with Ananda College, they established Buddhist schools in many parts of the country. Other religions too followed its footsteps and established their own schools. By the beginning of the 20th century, the English educated middle class in the Sri Lanka had developed to a reasonable level, but the Sri Lankan middle class was kept away from the political activities. Therefore, the British educated middle class joined the national movement and agitated for constitutional reforms. With increased activities of the national movements, Sri Lanka was heading from a monarchy to a democracy. However, the real motive of this was not gaining independence to the country, but involved in the decision-making process. The Sri Lankan society, which was sharing and caring in the past, changed to a self-centered and egocentric society. The British rulers were careful to plant the seeds of racial and religious separation in the minds of Sri Lankans. This was evident from the very first constitutional committee that was introduced on racial-based representation in government. The British education and governing policies led the foundation for a divided nation. The racially and religiously divided education system provided the ideal foundation to this. It was this backdrop that provided the impetus for a resurgence of Buddhist and Hindu nationalism towards the latter part of the 19th century. Even though divide and conquer did not work spontaneously like in India, the effects are still visible in the Sri Lankan society. This race and religious centered mindset was one of the prime reasons for the civil war in Sri Lanka that began in 1976 and turned the pearl of the Indian Ocean to the teardrop of the Indian Ocean.